Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. The overwhelming question this week are, have been mainly about raccoons, our friends here. Uh, scenes like this being played out all over the metro area. And the reason for that is this is uh, the, the time when the adults are teaching their babies where the good free sources of food are. And they are, are bringing them into your your bird feeder stations, they're bringing them into your trash cans, they're bringing them, if you feed dogs or cats and you leave your food outside, they're taking care of that every night. Um, and a lot of questions on how do I deal with the raccoons and how do I uh, still feed my birds and, and coexist with these rascals. So thought I'd do a program on that today. And oh, there's a few things that you have to know about raccoons. One is that uh, they can climb just about anything. I, 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 it amazes me when they're like, oh, I, li I feed on the second floor deck. They can't climb up there. Oh my goodness. They are some of the most incredible climbers in the world. I've seen them, I've seen them go into a hole uh, in a hundred, up about a hundred feet up in a tree before with hardly any limbs between the ground and that hundred foot mark where the hole was. And I've just seen them with babies on their back shinny up the hundred foot tree. Um, they can climb uh, and like no other and so most poles and deck arms and uh, deck railings things like that are no competition for them they can certainly get up there uh, but they are not good jumpers and that you've got your an advantage on whenever you're you're feeding um, with uh, it, things that may be too close to a tree a pole that's too close to a tree for a squirrel because they can jump great maybe just fine for a raccoon. So that's another thing to remember about raccoons and their abilities. Um, the other thing about them is they have these semi-opposable thumbs. They, they can manipulate things. They can get uh, things off of hooks. They can get things open that a lot of animals cannot because they have the ability with their hands to, to, to manipulate things like uh, almost like a, man, a, a human. So crazy uh, articulate with their hands. So Another thing to wonder, to, to, to try to outsmart them on, what are my recommendations? Okay, let's go here. Show you a couple things. Well, I'm going to show you the back of my house right now. Um, this is when we were first setting up uh, mine, but you'll notice that I have the raccoon baffles on both of my poles. Um, that keeps the squirrels and the raccoons off. And all, the thing I want you to notice is I actually have them I could even go a little bit higher, which this time of year is the time of year you may want to go as high as you possibly can with your raccoon baffles, because this is the time, what, you, what you're causing a raccoon to do here is to start climbing um, the smaller diameter pole with his hands, and then he has to make the transition, he or she has to make the transition to that larger baffle to try to bear hug it, the shinny up, to, the, the, but they can't do that, they can't make that transition. Why is that failing right now? Well, if your baffle is low enough, they're pyramiding. You saw the number of raccoons in that last picture, and they are going to end up attacking like this. This is the, the, the a big adult will stand on the ground, get up on his back legs, reach up as high as it can, and the other young ones are going to climb her back or his back, and then they can shinny up the the, the baffle with a, a bear hug and end up getting up there. So. They'll, they'll climb on top of each other's back, each other's back, and then they'll, um, a few of them will end up getting up, and then they'll just throw the food down, knock the things, the feeders off the poles. So they'll, they'll pick the feeders up and shake them so that the seed's falling out on the ground, and everybody gets to eat that way. So while baffles are great, and they truly are great, they are sometimes, uh, you may have limitations to what you can do. Uh, this is a, Again, if the Chris were to have problems here, uh, this is in Florida, if they, they, he, he bought these here and he got it set up, he may want to raise that uh, raccoon baffle up a, even higher if he finds that a raccoon actually ends up on, on those feeders. So they make sure that you, if you've got a raccoon baffle on your pole, that you've got it as high as you can possibly get it uh, uh, on that pole and still be able to be effective because that pyramid effect can really get you. They, they, they're smart, smart animals. So. Baffles are truly great. Whenever I was director at Martha Lafitte uh, Nature Sanctuary in Liberty, you know, we had baffles on poles out in the yard. We could leave those feeders out at night, but all the ones on deck hooks, 
we had to bring in every night and put them in a Rubbermaid container and put them inside the nature center. And first thing in the morning, we would go hang those feeders back out on the deck railing. You may find yourself having to do that. But one of my favorite tricks, and this is my house as well, is the uh, is by hanging from under an eave. This is hanging from, not from a gutter, but under the eave. Got a little teacup hook up there, and I got an extension hook on it so that it hangs right in front of the window that where we see the hummingbirds. And the raccoon can't get to that. And the raccoons do have a sweet tooth. They love sugar water. They will drink every bit of it. Um, sometimes you'll wake up in the morning and you'll find your hummingbird feeder or your oriole feeder on the ground. Sometimes it'll just be dry every morning and you're going, well, what's happening? He's just tipping it up so that he can drink it and then not disturbing and not knocking it off. So that if you're waking up to empty hummingbird feeders, that's probably your culprit. So hanging from under the eave if you can, or even attaching to a window with window suction cup hooks like we have uh, and hanging the feeder there. That's another ant great anti-raccoon uh, method. Take all your food, uh, again, I uh, mentioned earlier, uh, your cans, your bird seed outside, all your excess food, dog food, cat food, anything you may have out there, secure it in uh, aluminum trash cans is what I like to use because the squirrels especially will chew through anything rubber made, but the aluminum will keep them from doing that. I have had to go in past, I have not right now, my, this house, knock on wood, but my old house, I had to use a bungee cord from handle to handle over the top of the aluminum trash can because the raccoons were figuring out how to get the lid off. So um, that, that's something you may find yourself having to do. But aluminum trash cans outside uh, with the bungee cords is a really, really secure place. Uh, because they are going to find any food that's out there. And then, of course, obviously, you know about your own trash cans and how you need to secure those. So uh, they're, they're on the move. They have lots of babies right now, and they're just looking for a free meal. And that's all they're doing is teaching their young uh, how to do this. We do not encourage the first picture. Where is that first picture again? Um, this is uh, uh, some purposely feeding raccoons, uh, and this is a dangerous thing to do. Uh, they are... Uh, the, not to mention getting into and ruining your landscaping and your trash cans and things. Your neighbors are impacted by this too, and it makes your neighbors quite angry. Uh, your dogs, your cats. And the guy said, well, he lets his dog out every night about 3 in the morning and lets him chase the raccoons. Well, my, my black lab, I'm not scared to do that because I have seen dogs that who have gotten a raccoon cornered, uh, like in a corner of a deck or somewhere, and when they come back, their nose is just scratched and, and bloody as it can be. Those raccoons are, are ferocious with those, their, their teeth and their, their claws. They can actually do a lot of damage to a dog's face. So not a good idea to do that, especially if there's a chance that that raccoon would, you know, could get. Basically, they're going to run off into the woods and climb a tree and be okay. But if just in a circumstance they may be uh, trapped or cornered, that can be very bad for the dog in that situation. So... Be cautious of raccoons. They're, you know, give them the respect they deserve, but do your part in trying to protect them from your stuff. I mean, that, that, that's the way to approach it there. So, great idea for a program. Send an idea for more. Please give the, the, the programs a like and a share. Oh, good idea. I forgot about the last thing on my list, and that is um, something else that is very popular right now in dealing with the raccoons is uh, the hot oil. Um, this is... Um, coals and it's a, a, a habanero oil mixture of different peppers um, that you mix in with your uh, seed mixes and boy you don't want to touch this with your fingers and rub your face because it is really really hot so uh, a lot of people are trying this to keep the raccoons off which has been very very effective against squirrels and it can be effective against raccoons now if it rains it dilutes it and things like that um, but uh, a lot of people are finding success with this and we also have the uh, sizzling heat mix which is from wild delight that this is already baked into the seed and another it has quickly risen to one of our best-selling seed blends in the store so that's another thing to try against the, the raccoons this time of year so again thanks for the idea give us a like give us a share uh, ideas for more programs would be more than welcome until then come by and let's talk birds two one would you like to learn more about wild birds you might want to hit that subscribe button